Welcome back to Darkest Dungeon, everyone. My name is Bear. We are treading dangerous waters, it seems, when we actually head out and try to take some of these medium difficulty missions on. Our entire A-team, quote-unquote, is now under duress, but healing up quite nicely. There's actually a little problem I've got with Chartres here. I realize he's got rabies, and that's something I'm probably going to want to address right away. So he's going to occupy our second sanitarium slot here. For the time being, nice little alliteration there as well. Thank you, man. Appreciate that compliment. No worries, buddy. I'm here to make you feel good about yourself. So, it's looking like we're going to be taking on a low-level mission this time around. Probably even going to bring out our newest recruit, Vane. Vane, the female, female plague doctor. They're all females. Got to remember, female, 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 female. Questionable. So, it's going to be, uh, yeah, low-level stuff. We're looking to get more deeds again, hopefully, because we'd like to upgrade the blacksmith armor smithing uh, up, uh, uh, you know, capability to level 3 here, eventually. So I'm going to see what kind of missions we've got available here. Although, making some progress on the warrants. Ooh, man, we have the swine prince available. Oh, boy, I wonder if we potentially have a party that could take care of that. I think we might, actually. I think we do. Yeah. Looking at this, we got Croc, Ashwil, Wateo, and Tornabut. That is a decent lineup, actually. I'd kind of want to bring the Jester, but these guys are all level 2. Except for... oh wait, no. Yeah, they're all level 2. Yes. Oh man, are we going to do this now? I think we're going to do this now. Yeah. Yeah, that's happening. Let's get ready for that. Okay, so we are spending as much money as humanly possible here. We are going to upgrade all these guys to their highest possible capabilities so we can prepare for the Swine Prince accordingly. Watteo is going to get up there in the damage output as well. That's like a ton of our money that we just spent, but it's going to be more than worth it because we want to put ourselves into a, as good of a position as we possibly can to do this. Uh, let's see, we've already upgraded both Finish Him and Mark for Death. Let's go ahead and buff up Collect for Bounty as well. And uh, I guess the Flashbang could have a higher chance to stun. That's pretty good too. How about for the Croc here? What do we got going on? Smite? I don't even necessarily know if I even really want to focus on Smite so much anymore. In fact, maybe if we bump up Inspiring Cry a little bit. I'm tempted to see what the result is beyond level 2. Let's do it. Uh, basically nothing. Oh no wait, it's one more stress heal. That's pretty good. It's not really a high priority, I'm not really sure why I focused that just now, but I'm okay with it. Oh, you know what would be great, actually? Maybe we should bring the Hellion here. Because I know the Swine Prince has a pretty high stun resist, but it is vulnerable to bleed. So maybe we bring the Hellion here. I don't necessarily want to, considering her low level. Let's make sure, actually. Hold on. Let's go here. She can only get up to level 2, I believe, with her weaponry and defense. But she might still be okay for this. Let's have a look at the guild real fast. We'll bring her in here. Actually, check check out her abilities as well. She's a Warren's phobe, and luckily... Oh no, we are going to the Warrens here. So that would be a little bit less stress resist, but she does have... Huh. Oh man, she's just... She's great in everything but the Warrens. That's pretty unfortunate. Huh. Well, she's already unlocked if it bleeds. And the Yop. She's got the, the skill set that I like to have on the... On the uh, Hellion here. You know what? I'm going to go for it. I think she'll be okay. We're going to upgrade all these. I'm even going to unlock Adrenaline Rush. I think. Maybe not. No, we'll save that money. Oh, this is questionable, but... I really think I'd prefer to take her. That bleed is pretty damn good. Plus, that's another stun. I mean, he's got a stun too, so that's not really a huge benefit. That kind of outweighs itself. Oh, man, I don't know. I'd like to level up another Hellion, too. Let's let's try to bring some of our lower-level characters out, I guess. That wouldn't be too bad. But in that respect, then maybe we should bring... Oh, we should bring the Jester, too. Because he's got two bleed abilities and the Battle Ballad. Oh, God, I can't decide now. What if we... Ooh, you know what we could do? No, that wouldn't work. I was going to say we could bring the Jester along with the Bounty Hunter, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. Tell you what, let's go here. Let's we'll we'll bring the Hellion. I'm gonna bring the Hellion. I think I feel like that's my better option. I could even bring Hellion Crusader, actually. Maybe I do that. And then we could have that stress heal available. Let's go with that. Let's go Hellion Crusader. Occultist? No, Plague Doctor. 
But then we'd have to level him up, of course. Let's bring our occultist. I need to bring up a, an occultist in the uh, into the level three territory. I feel like that would probably be pretty worthwhile. And you know, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I should probably keep tournament available for the lower level missions. Yeah, that might almost be necessary. Meaning, maybe we go plague doctor or jester. How about this? How about we go jester? And then we have double bleed and the battle ballad available. So obviously we're going to go level him up real quick, so let's go ahead and keep spending all that good old cash money. We're going to bring him into the guild. Still, uh, you know, okay, currency-wise. Yeah, this looks okay. Alright, I'll go with that. I like it. It's questionable, but I think it'll work. So, Hellion, check. Croc, check. Jester in the third, Watteo in the back. I think this will work. We're gonna have the Battle Ballad, we have the Inspiring Tune just in case. But we have two Stress Heals on this team. We're gonna keep him with the Holy Lance for now until we need, or er, bleh, until we know we need the Inspiring Cry, or we could take Smite off considering we are going into the Warrens. Hmm. Yeah, I think this will work. Let's do this. Hopefully a little bit of leveling up for our, for our current roster here. Okay, let's do it. Standard old 12 food. I'm gonna bring two shovels along with one key Gonna be a little less prepared these times. Uh, I'll bring three bandages Now nah, I'm gonna go with the uh, Conservative approach again and then one of each of these and then a couple of torches just to have them in case We run into uh, some scrolls on the ground or something like that having the torches for the scrolls is actually except exceptionally useful whenever we go into the warrens so I like that approach. Let's do it. The ways and rituals of blood sacrifice are difficult to master. Those from beyond require a physical vessel if they are to make the crossing into our reality. The timing of the chance is imperative. Without the proper utterances at precise intervals, the process can fail spectacularly. If we know about anything, it's spectacular failure. Let's go for it. So, I've heard from multiple sources, multiple sources have confirmed, that the boss is always in the room furthest away from your starting point. Meaning, that we have found the Swine Prince. So we're gonna go ahead and straight for it. And what I'm probably gonna end up doing as well, is going along the edge here, and assuming that I do well enough here to be able to explore the dungeon a little bit more than I could, uh, Go like this, and then potentially bob and weave my way back around around here and explore every single room. That is, again, assuming that things go well enough. But I've got a positive outlook. I think we'll be okay. Very little inventory space to start out with. I didn't go nearly as underprepared as I had originally planned to, but I think I like having I like having my options available. And now that we've got the entire list of curios available to us, I think we need to uh, you know kind of take advantage of that as much as possible. Good dodge to start out with, okay. Oh, I totally forgot my trinkets! Oh, that sucks! Man, that's something that I really need to focus on a little bit more these days. Gotta make sure I'm uh, equipping myself appropriately, that's gonna be a huge difference maker. Oh, man. Well, at least we got a bleed stone on a couple of guys. Although, oh wait, why do I have a bleed stone on him? Okay, so I'm definitely gonna give this to... Why in the world did I have a bleed stone on this guy? I'm gonna give that to the Jester pretty soon. Let's go with Zealous Accusation. As there goes the one. Falls, a faint hope blossoms. I think I might even need to kind of realign the, uh, my skill set on this guy is totally backwards. So I didn't prepare nearly as well as I ought to have for this, uh, for this expedition, but I'm sure we'll still be okay nonetheless. Let's go with perhaps a pull right here. Pretty sure he doesn't really uh, take too much effect from that, but I might as well do it anyway. And this guy is vulnerable to bleed. He's also vulnerable to dying. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Goddamn right. Oh yeah, he can still do vomit from the front row. I was kind of hoping that wasn't the case, but you know, whatever. We got the stress heal available too. In fact, I'm probably going to do a little bit of stress healing on my jester pretty early on here, considering the fact that he's already kind of hurting for the. Uh... Oh nice. Well, that'll help him out quite a bit. He's already hurting in the stress department. I probably should have addressed that before we even came out here, but nonetheless, uh, let's go with a mark. Get the guaranteed kill if I happen to land something on that dude like such. How about a breakthrough for the win? 
Not quite. As the enemy crumbles. But he's weak enough to where I could definitely kill him with something. Let's go ahead and do some stress healing here. I likes it. All right, give me the first turn. No, good. Oh man, this is actually okay. Yeah, that that did not work out well. Oh, that was oh that was definitely suboptimal. Son of a gun. All right. These nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. Minus 20% heal received in the camp. Well, that's going to be unfortunate. Okay, so obviously you're going to go ahead and put this on him. Uh, well, i got to switch it out to the inventory, I guess, first. There we go. So that's going to be pretty damn good for the Jester, actually. 20% 20, 20 bonus to his bleed skill chances. And then, unfortunately, we don't have much else by way of trinkets. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to focus on stress heals for the Jester for the next little while. Got an early scout here, of course, which is... Very, very helpful. Got to address that trap eventually. I think she's got a decent trap chance. She's got a 30. 20 here. 40 on the Jester? 30 on the Jester. How about... Uh, Alright, well, it doesn't really matter who we go with then. Not a huge deal. Stashed and looms! Nice. Get to use some more deeds here. As we were mentioning before, that is kind of the priority. Unfortunately, this area is not really designed to give me a lot of those. Uh, I don't think I even necessarily want to use the bandage anymore right now. I could have used it as soon as we got that bleed, but... Now that we have to kind of let it run its course, I suppose it's not nearly as worthwhile. I am totally down with finding empty rooms. The, the more emptiness we come across before we hit the Swine Prince, the better. And this is not really what we had in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and start this with a pull. This is obviously the, the uh, best possible start if we can get that forward. There we go. Whenever we can get him to say that, too, obviously we've achieved at least a minor victory. Pass the turn, and definitely going to go for a stun on this guy, but I don't know if I... Uh, let's go for a crit boost. A little bit of extra speed from that as well. Yeah, let's go stunning blow here. Give me that chance. Nice! That's good. It's only a base of 100% still, but obviously still works out quite well. We can get a double stun here, too. He's got the boost from the stun resist, but I still think... Yeah, we got it, baby. Nice. All right, so... What do we do here now? We can go ahead with the uh, vulnerability hex, make this guy a little bit easier to take down if it lands, obviously. Stress heals are always good. Trying to put ourselves in as good of a position as possible to take care of the Swine Prince. These guys aren't even going to get a chance to operate this turn. Very advantageous for us. Oh, they got that buff, of course. Alright, so, 45%. He's going to be up to, like, 90, so obviously we're going to want to start dealing some actual damage to him now. Give me that bleed, baby. Oh, yes! Not a bad start at all. Alright, that proxy is done, and now we are even as far as the uh, condition of the battle here. Let's try this mark again. Should we debuff him as well? Oh no, he did resist the debuff, okay. Uh, let's see, Harvest obviously only still targets him, so we go with the slice off in this condition. Stack that bleed, baby! That's what I'm talking about! Rush shot shouldn't do too much. Might do a breakthrough here, actually, to try to get both of these guys taken down a peg. And she's got her debuff applied already, though, so maybe we don't do that. Yeah, let's go with it, please. Try to stack that one more time. She's got a very high hit chance and a very high bleed chance still. Six damage per three turns, and unfortunately he's still going to live, but still in a much better position anyway. In fact, if we do this, this will be great. And he should die before he gets the chance to act here. Nice. Very good. And I believe he's already passed the turn, too. Perhaps the turning point. That is super good. Okay. Oh, God, I keep forgetting. we got to realign this dude's uh, setup here. Gotta not forget to do that after this fight. That's priority number one. And we're gonna need some healing, too. Okay, yeah, the Hellion's already starting to feel a little bit worse for wear. Gonna have him have his stress relief available as well as a Wicked Hag to finish it off. Not bad. As victories mount, so too will resistance. So he's got Hands from the Abyss, unfortunately, is the only other one he has available. I, whew, I made a big mistake. Okay, huge misplays going into this fight. I've already made sure of that. Oh, that's unfortunate. I wonder if... No, you know what? I still think it's better to keep him in the back line anyway. He's not going to do a lot of good in the third slot, and the Jester obviously has to have his bleed skills available, because that was the entire reason we brought him in the first place. So, sadly, we're going to have to make do with what we got here. we got plenty of bandages to take care of this thing, luckily. Thorough search of a wooden plank it grants us a whole bunch of shit. Are often low on supplies. That worked pretty well. Definitely use some food for healing. That's obviously a, you know, a reliable source of heals for when your characters are otherwise indisposed of being able to help you out in that respect. Alright, so if we eat four food here, we'll still have eight food left for the camp out that we're going to take, of course, right before we get into the Swine Prince here. Ah, uh, we get a trap right beforehand, too, so it's looking like some stress relief is going to be necessary. 
but we can do this too. Alright, there we go. So, here is the Swine Prince. We will camp out right before we get here. Oh, you know what? Actually, we can't do it here. I was thinking we could do it in the hallway, but obviously not a possibility. So we're going to go all the way back. Some extra stress, unfortunately, as a result of that. But I still think... Stop stepping on my feet. Oh, God. Yeah, going all the way backwards. So somebody lied to me then, because I've heard a, a couple of people tell me that you can uh, camp out in the hallway. Not the case. We do have to be in a room. All right. Here we go. A spark without kindling. It's a goal without hope. So stress is not that high. But we do have options to turn it away. In fact... Oh, he doesn't have the rewind time. That would have been a nice one. We don't necessarily need to heal here. Let's have a look at all of our other options. Reduce all of companions' stress by 10 and heal for 10%. But that does cost 5 respite. 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 Uh, reduce her own stress by 25. Actually, not that bad. We could use this in combination with the Zealous Speech, and that would kind of work out. Maybe we go that route. Ooh, Revel. Yeah, that's not really a great idea either. Uh, Encourage is also a good option. Let's see what kind of buffs we can get going here. A couple of stress resist buffs, not the greatest things in the world. Oh, this is a pretty damn good one too, actually. Reduces their stress by 20. Oh, man. We got pretty much all stress relief here. Huh. Well, let's go ahead and improve the Jester's damage, maybe? No, maybe not. Who's got the highest base damage right now? It is the Hellion. Yeah, we'll go for that. Dark Strength. But the Eldritch Powers, of course. And then I think I am gonna go with Reject the Gods. Trust only what you can kill. And then we go Zealous Speech. Get not that our errand is holy and just. And then finally, I say we go with a, uh... Hmm, well... Yeah, I think we can do Encourage here. And then do it, uh, another one with the Hellion after she just got done berating him for her barbaric desires. And that puts us in a pretty good spot. So we only got one buff out of that, sadly, but our stress is in very good shape otherwise. I was ill-prepared for this. Despite the, uh, despite the over-planning, I, uh, I am not in as good of a position a nearly a blazing star is born. as I could have been for this whole fight. So, we'll have to go in here and hope for the best as we take on the mighty Swine Prince. Let's go! So with the Swine Prince... You have Wilbur and you have the Prince himself, who occupies three slots and is a massive son of a bitch. And he looks so cool. And disgusting. I really like the art with this guy, though. It's pretty awesome. So, the thing about this fight is you do not ever want to target Wilbur while the Swine Prince is available. Do not make that mistake. He will kick your sorry ass for messing with his little cute adorable pal here. So do not do that, unless of course you can do something that immediately kills him, but I've never actually seen anyone do that. So, you know, whatever you want to try out there. I'm going to start off with a vulnerability hex here, try to reduce his dodge chance and improve the damage dealt from all of our sources, of course. Starting off by stacking the bleed, again I mentioned before, he's got a very high stun resist, but his bleed resist is literally nothing, meaning I'm pretty sure we have a 100% chance to hit this. So we have two characters that can stack bleed, meaning we're going to do a lot of damage to him over the course of time, as long as we can keep our guys in decent shape. But unfortunately, he has marked our occultists, so we're going to have to be kind of careful about that. Uh, Inspiring Cry is not really necessary. I say we go with a... Well, you know what? I might even... No, that's a you know guaranteed not stun, so... Let's maybe try the Holy Lance and try to get some good damage here. Not bad. Alright, so we're already uh, pretty far down the health marker here. Wild Flailing is not really that bad. Luckily, he didn't do any kind of status ailment with it either. He's just going to keep marking us from that back line here. Obviously, he's going to be kind of dangerous considering the fact that that can boost up the damage considerably. Nice resist and good heal as well. Okay, so we basically countered his entire turn and gave ourselves chances for our own movements. I think Smite probably would have been a much better idea to have for this fight, but oh well. Nice crit! Blow. Ha ha! A little bit of stress relief from that as well. Very, very good. Keep stacking that bleed, baby. 
Eight damage per round for three rounds, although obliterate body, yeah, that's gonna hurt. Nearly half of his health in one swing. Of course, again, his options are limited, so. Really, this fight isn't so bad, much less, uh, you know, unbeatable. So long as you avoid the temptation of annihilating the little critter in the back line. And that, I think, or apparently, as I'm told, is the mistake that a lot of folks make in trying to defeat this boss early on. So as long as you avoid doing that, you're usually sitting pretty. Especially when you can stack bleed to 8 damage per freaking round. It's pretty amazing. And he might even be dead here. No, he's gonna get a he's gonna get one more mark off, and then hopefully we get one more action before that takes effect. It does look like we will. So he should be gone. Ten damage will take place before he even gets a chance to act, which means I might even want to take an opportunity to try to do some uh, damage to Wilbur there, but unfortunately the barbarian or the Hellion rather has no option to do so. So there he goes! Horrible in death. Liquefaction cannot come soon enough. Gonna take some opportunities to heal here, because it looks like I will indeed be going for some, uh... for some extra treasure going through the rest of this dungeon here. So Wilbur's got a stun, which is very nice for us, and we get another opportunity to heal up. Keep resisting that bleed, baby. Unfortunately, only one health from that one, but... I believe we are very, very close to our assured victory here. One more shot from the Crusader and the Zealous Accusation, you shall repent! This expedition at least promises success. I think I can go with this seer stone here. That sounds like a little bit of fun. Recovery chalice I'll probably dump off. But nonetheless, we have defeated the swine prince. And we have to take this one for free because there's no use for a key on the boss chest, of course. Ooh, a move amulet. Reduces accuracy but gives a big chance to push and pull skills. You know what? I'm going to give the occultist that one. That sounds like a good time. All right. Let's keep moving, man. Why not? Let's make some progress here. Let's get some goodies. We gotta make up for all that money we spent before we came in here, right? That's a pretty high priority. There's our holy water use as well. A thorough search gives us four crests and an onyx. Stacking up that onyx stack. I like it. She's still got a damage buff as well. That's pretty awesome. Hopefully we can put that to good effect. Now, this is an empty room, so maybe I don't even want to necessarily go here, but of course that does kind of ruin our serpentine approach, so maybe we go there anyway. Could be some stuff in the hallway, you never know. Like a book, for example. I'll try it out. Ah, son of a bitch. Alright, just some stress, not too bad. We can take care of that hopefully before we get in here. Nice trap dodge, gotta love that from the occultist. Good stuff happening, man. Good, good stuff. Really hoping to be able to utilize a lot of these other consumables we've still got in the pack as well. Obviously would not like to uh, waste the money that way. A little bit more crate heirlooms, gotta love it! More crests. Now the crests may end up being something that I don't consider nearly as high of a priority for now. Ancient traps lie in wait. Unsprung and thirsting for blood. I'm gonna go ahead and let him not die off from that bleed out there. Yeah, the crests I'm finding show up pretty damn frequently and in abundance as well. So I'm I'm starting to lean toward the possibility of dumping off crests in favor of other things as we go through the dungeons here. Secrets and wonders can be found in the most tenebrous corners of this place. Oh, that is not good that we get shuffled around like that to start off this fight. And then some drums of debilitation, a little bit more stress for our crusader. May end up wanting to switch the jester all the way back to the back line here, actually. In fact, yeah, that seems like a good option. Maybe try to do that, or, uh, oh, you know what? We don't even have his stress heal equipped, though, so maybe that's not going to work out. Yeah, I probably should have thought of that before I did the things I did, but luckily we can do this now. And that breakthrough is not a bad option here, either, considering the fact that they're all kind of weakened already. Dodge it! Oh, damn. A little bit of bleed. All right, we're going to have to bandage him up a little bit, probably. Let's go for a breakthrough. It doesn't deal enough damage. It certainly looks like it. Almost got him, but Zealous Accusation will certainly finish him off if we get the opportunity to act beforehand. I'll take a gamble on stacking some bleed here. Nice! Alright, that's the kind of result we're hoping for. Ooh, nice and a good dodge there too, okay. I'm feeling good about this now. We really got to equip his AoE stress heal, that's going to be the big thing before we, uh... Before we move forward with, with the rest of the dungeon here. I'm going to keep him in the back slot and then we'll, uh... Hope for the best from that point forward. I think I'm cool with a breakthrough here as well. That'll do! 
Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. So we'll take off the harvest, I believe, and then go ahead and throw on the inspiring tune, and everything looks pretty good that way. I uh, still got a bleed going, but it's really not that bad. I think it's something we can survive, especially considering the fact that we don't have any more bandages, so there's nothing we can do about it anyway. Looks okay, though. I think we're going to be able to make it through the rest of this thing in one solid, fragmented shell of a human being's piece. There we go. Oh, I forgot! I forgot we're out of food. <laughs> oh, God! Whoops! Let's get out! Oh, no. That came back to bite me real fast. Oh, boy! I can't believe I totally forgot we were out of food. Well, this episode... Man, I was feeling pretty confident about the things I've been doing up to this point, but goddamn if I didn't make a lot of really dumb decisions through the course of this one, I'll tell you what. Oh boy, we got a couple thin bloodeds here, some light resist wearing out. Warren's abilities, and then Slayer of the Unholy on Watayo here as well. Decent uh, experience, of course. We got, I think, uh, two resolve experience from that one. But we killed the Swine Prince! I'll take that as a solid victory. And I'll, you know, cry myself to sleep about the poor decisions I made beforehand. I was lord of this place. Before the crows and rats made it their domain. Observed unsavory activities and refuses to take part in organized prayer again. Alright then. Oh, nice! But Roy got improved balance. I like that one a lot. Take care of the rabies and the lazy eye, and Prashot is now an adventurer jester. Nice. All right, well, we've got a lot of things to take care of next time here, but thank you very much for watching this episode of Darkest Dungeon. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I appreciate all the support. We'll see you next time.